All right, everybody. So today we're talking about the actual bottling process. And we're gonna do it all in eight minutes. Or less, probably. No, we're not. <laughs> start the timer. Have you met us? All right, timer's going. Timer's on. All right, let's start with equipment. Uh, you need a bottling bucket with a spigot and a, a two to three foot piece of 5 16 inch transfer tubing and a bottle filler with a, with a spring, also known as a bottling wand. Now, if you want to see how to actually make a bottling bucket, shoot over to our bottling bucket video. We go through the entire thing step by step, super easy. So we're not going to cover that here because we only have seven minutes and 45 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> That's a great idea though. Recommend that other video. I love that video. All right, moving so, on. You will need a bottling bucket, spring, all that. You will need bottles. If you are not using flip tops. And they have to be able to accept a crown. If yes. you're reusing bottles that you saved, like certain brands out there that screw top their bottles, probably not gonna work for you. Well, fun fact, I've tested I'll, this. Well, it will work, it is not ideal. Yeah, just don't do it, just get the right bottle. Come on. Buy craft beer and then you use They're those They're cheap bottles. enough and just go grab a case of like, Heretic or something. Exactly. You know, something drink that, you know? Heretic puts a lot of stuff in bottom. You will need 26 millimeter caps. So these are crowns, caps, whatever. Uh, everybody does them differently. Um, we like the American flag. There is also, if you're doing champagne bottles and European bottles, European bottles actually take a 29 millimeter crown. They're a little cap. bigger. Just, just three mils bigger, but it makes a difference. Yes, and they do accept a different bell. Yes. So you do. So if you have your bench capper or your Red Baron wing capper, it will not. This one is your standard like Black Beauty capper. The bell is basically molded into it, so you cannot remove it. This is for your standard cap size, like your American flag cap we just showed you. On the Red Baron capper, you can actually unthread the smaller bell. See, there's your old bell. We'll set that over there by RJ. <laughs> and then here's your big bell. You thread that in there. Boom. Boom. Now you can do Belgian caps in those cool little bottles. You know, you can cork and cage them too. Yeah, in the, the Vinnie Prize, the 375s or the 500s or the 750 mil champagne bottles. Yes, you'll need the bigger bell. Yes. So keep awesome. that in mind. You can't just buy the caps and expect this one to work without changing your bell. Exactly. Or the bench capper. Or the bench capper. Bench capper, these are, if, if, if you're going to do a capper and you plan on bottling for a while, the bench capper is the way in the pack. It's it's sturdier, it's it's a better piece of equipment. Um, it, it's, it will literally last you forever for the rest of your life. If you take care of it. If you take care of it. Yeah, the, but they're, they're nice, it's high grade. It makes bottling easier, it makes bottling any size easier. The next thing you're gonna need is your priming sugar. Now you can use dextrose, you can use carbonation tabs, you can use honey, you can use fruit juice, anything that is made of simple sugar, you can use as priming sugar. It's a whole thing. Yeah, you just need a simple sugar and you can use honey. You know, uh, honey it's is a little different on the mount that you wanna use. Yep. But dextrose is definitely the easiest and the most common. And it goes into solution easy. It's just a lot easier to work with than most types of sugar unless you're using fruit juice. Yes. Four ounces of dextrose is basically where you want to be. Right. And what is with all the diesel trucks driving by? Is know. it like diesel class? Apparently car? they're racing right outside. This is ridiculous and they're messing up our sound. We're, we're down to two minutes. <laughs> I don't think we got two minutes. Left. I know, I've just played. So um, one thing to remember is the, the one ounce per gallon of wort is kind of an antiquated measurement. Um, nowadays we do 0.8 ounces per gallon of wort and that puts you in the 2.7 to 2.9 range. Um, Coors Light, if you think about it, is like 3.2 or 3.1 to 3.3 volumes of carbonation. And, and that's a lot. And that's what five ounces and five gallons is going to give you is, in my opinion, yeah. yeah it, it's, it's definitely carbonated. Yeah, it's an almost over Hopefully carbonated. Hopefully you're not infected volume. in the over carbonated. <laughs> right. Well, you shouldn't be infected anyway. You shouldn't be infected anyway. Let your beer finish all the way out before you bottle it. Okay. Process. Yeah, that's a good point. What he means by that, take your reading with your hydrometer, make sure you're done fermenting. Yeah. It's like this two day turnaround of fermentation. Well, it's not bubbling anymore. It's like, but it's still fermenting. Yes. It's like, and it's conditioning. You got to give it some time because you got those sugars in there. If you were to go into the bottle way too soon, 
when you go into that bottle and it's not done and you add more sugar to it, when you go and you cap it and you have a set out, it'll probably be okay for maybe the first day, but the second day, those bottles are probably going to start exploding because there's so much CO2 building up in there because the yeast is still consuming the residual sugar and then the additional sugar you put in there. So they're just gonna carb and carb and carb and carb. They may or may not blow, or when you open them, they're just gonna be like, yeah. And then you're not gonna, you're gonna have like maybe an ounce of beer after that. Yeah, homebrew shrapnel bombs are not ideal. Yeah, and this <laughs> happened here in a growler. Do not carbonate in a Do growler. Do not carbonate in growlers. Yeah, True. The glass unless it's is the way flip too top thin. thick glass one. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about process. What we do, we have our bottling bucket. We also have another bucket filled with star soup. So what we'll do is we will take all of our bottle, well, as many bottles as fit in the bucket, right? Have all the bottles lined out, put all the bottles down in the bucket of star sand, get everything set up after you measure, but when you're adding your priming sugar, what you wanna do is you wanna boil it, boil some water, <coughs> make sure that sugar is in solution, and then put that sugar in the bottom, that liquid sugar at this point, in the bottom of your bottling bucket. And then you rack on top of that. What that's gonna do is that's gonna give the sugar the chance to evenly go throughout solution as you as transfer. You, as you transfer. Mm. Exactly. So I had to finish your sentence because you're talking so fast, I'm trying to slow you down. Well, I only have what, 30 seconds? I don't know. What does it say on this screen? <laughs> Where are we at? I don't know, so, it doesn't show up here for us. <laughs> I know. So transfer on top of it, that's gonna give you sugar evenly distributed throughout solution, and that's going to allow your bottles to evenly carbonate. Exactly. It's going to help your bottles evenly carbonate. It's not yeah. guaranteed, but it's going to help. Whereas if you were to transfer into your bottling bucket and then add your bottling sugar, it's not really the best idea because then it's not going to get evenly distributed into your beer at this point. Exactly. And you do not want to stir it in. Yeah. You know, you can like, if you really have to, it's like you can probably do it super gently, but you don't want to splash it, aeration. I mean, there's right. just so many things that could go wrong there. And and the big thing here is keeping the O2 down. You, you don't yeah. want oxygen on your finished beer. Yep, the only oxygen that should be going into that beer is what's left in here when you pull the bottling wand. And the beauty of that is the yeast will eat that and turn as it into they CO2. consume mm -hmm. and turn it into CO2. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and <clears throat> all right, so bottles in the star sand. As you're ready to bottle, you pull the bottles out of your star sand, empty them out, and take your bottle filler, as, as my lovely assistant will demonstrate. <laughs> so this is spring-loaded. That means once you turn that valve on and you start the siphon, the siphon will be going, but it will only go as you press that bottle wand, bottling wand on the bottom of the bottle. So put it in the bottle, and you wanna make sure you fill it completely to the top. Once it's all the way at the top, almost overflowing, once you pull that bottle in one out, you're going to have perfect displacement in every bottle, which is also very important for head pressure and for proper carbonation. Rinse, repeat. I feel like I'm on an airplane, <laughs> right? <laughs> so everybody, grab your seatbelt like this, <laughs> click, click. So once it your pulls out- Your seat can also be used as a life preserver. <laughs> And water. <laughs> so, or life vest. I don't know, I said that all wrong. See, this is why I don't work on airplanes. <laughs> so, uh, after you pull it out, hopefully you have somebody helping you. <laughs> put the cap on, cap it, and you're done. And that's it. Do that for all of your bottles until you run out of beer. Now, and, and that's it. it. It's The process really is that simple. The, the important part is the setup process. So, you want to make sure that you set yourself up for success. The other thing that we've found and run into quite a bit on these wing cappers is you, you do not need your body weight on the wing capper yes. to make it work. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like some of these guys are like, Ugh! you know, and then they break it. And I'm like, dude, it's like, what are you doing? We, we can't tell you how many wing cappers come back because and people they're broke, are like, like right here. Yeah. And I was like, dude, it's like, did you stand on it? And exactly. And they're, they're not, it should go just like this. So you have your cap. Imagine a cap on here and a bottle here like this, okay? You're ready to cap. So this is how it should go. Like, and then it'll go click, click, done. That's it. Yes. Yeah. You do not do click, click. Oh, uh, 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 uh. did it shut? I was like, yes. You just click, yeah. click, and you will feel the kunk, kunk. Yes. I don't know how many different sound effects I just made right now, <laughs> but it's just like click, click. That's it. But if you keep 
going, it is not gonna do anything else except break your equipment. Or it will break the neck of your... Yeah, or you'll break it right in here. Yeah. Or the lid may not seat properly. It's like, it does not take a lot to bend this little tiny little, little thing. If you think about it, you're bending it about a millimeter and a half it does over not that belt. Take much. It, it doesn't take a lot. So yes. let the machine do the work and that's it. it you got me on a little tangent. I, I know. I planned that. Because people come in and I'm <laughs> just like, you got it. <laughs> what have you done? So another thing that we run into a lot are carbonation times. Now, if you added your simple syrup or your bottling sugar or whatever you're using properly and everything's evenly distributed throughout solution, and you're at room temp, what we always do is day four, on the way into work, one goes in the fridge and we test. Yeah. This, it is not going to be like that every time. However, more often than not, it will be. Um, the, the standard in the, what you always read and what you always hear is let it sit for two weeks and then let it sit for two weeks in the fridge. It, all it takes is as long as those yeasties need to eat that small amount of simple sugar, which is, Usually pretty fast. So well, let's be honest. Who wants to wait a month for the beer to crack? Seriously. Now you get a lot of good evolution and, and like aging on on any beer that first month, but at the same time, like try it. Especially if you're an IPA, all your bearings starts dropping. Exactly. Jamil, I, I on his live broadcast on the Brewing Mac, he was talking about how quickly your bittering would just drop off after like a few weeks. Well, and it, it's crazy, and it makes sense. So let it carbonate room temp there's a lot of variables here for like a fair. week for, throw yeah. one or two in there if you have a friend exactly you know i usually i just throw one in there but uh well if you have a friend throw two in <laughs> and then um the reason we throw them in the fridge you cannot just pull it out of the closet open it pour it and expect it to be carbonated right. it's not going to happen because the co2 is on top of warm wort right now or room temperature wort you got to put it in the fridge you got to get the wort cold get it chilled all that CO2 will start to go into solution and carbonate the beer. CO2 goes into solution with temperature and head pressure. Yes. So you, you have to give it that cold times and to give the CO2 the solution. opportunity to do that. Very important because I think a lot of homebrewers miss that because they go and they open it, oh, we're not carbed yet, you know, yeah. and then they, they drink it or dump it or whatever, and then they let the rest go at room temp. When they were carbed, they just had to get the beer cold. Exactly. It's like you got to give it some time to get cold. Like throw it in the fridge before you go to work. When you come home after work and you want that beer in the evening, pull it out, see where you're at. It's going to be cold by that time, yep. you know, if you work for longer than at least four hours, you know. That's all it takes. Um, and then pour it in the glass, and then boom. It's like if you're not carbed at that point in the – the beer was entirely cold, you know, and you poured it, was not carbonated, then leave it out another week and it's, repeat the process. It's really that easy. Yeah, and now, it'll probably be carved up the next week. Yeah, more likely than not. Now, an important note is that super high gravity beers, uh, Belgians, stuff like that, sometimes it can take longer. And every once in a while this happens. Uh, what, what we like to tell people is don't panic, give it time. Keep testing them, test them once every couple weeks, once a week, once a month, whatever you want. Sometimes the yeast are ridden hard, put away wet, and they just, they need yeah. extra time to eat that simple sugar in that high gravity solution. The alcohol tolerance, you know, for those high gravity beers sometimes can give you bottle conditioning problems. So a lot of times what breweries will do, because they need that consistency, they can't throw a beer into market without it being carbonated, you know, because it would make them look bad. You know, so what they will do is they'll set it up to where when they are adding their sugar for bottle, bottling conditioning, bottling conditioning, <laughs> bottle conditioning, <laughs> they will add yeast as well. Yeah. And at this point, you know, you can add in just a simple champagne strain or something like that in your bottling bucket or USO5, just a very simple strain. It's not gonna impart any flavors or anything. It's just carbonating at this point. That's why you gotta be careful when you're pulling dregs out of bottles and propping them up because you may be propping up the wrong strain. But True. anyway, yeah, different re video. <laughs> Reyeasting is definitely a thing, and and we'll do we we can probably do a whole video just on reyeasting. I know. Oh my gosh. There, there's so much to it. But yeah, for eight minutes or less, this is how you bottle. It's super easy. I was still talking about champagne yeast. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Slow down, dude. Sorry. Sorry. We still have time. Do we? I don't know. I can't see the timer. I can't see it either. <laughs> it's right but yeah, over there. just add a champagne strain in there with your sugar. You know, and then you'll have a little extra yeast in there to help bring it up. It's like, you don't want to overdo it. You know, you just got to really run that fine line because you don't want that big yeast cake down there. Well, but with the lack of sugar, you shouldn't have. Exactly. And the champagne strain, you can't kill it with fire. It's only going to eat simple sugar. So it's it's one of the Fast. better options. And it's a five gram pack. Five grams, a gram per gallon is, is perfect because you just need 
you really just need a few cells in each bottle to eat that sugar. They're gonna prop up, it's gonna give you a real nice layer at the bottom that isn't like that, like Josh was saying. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So hopefully we answered the questions for bottling. We have a bottling blog on the Brucranium yep. that RJ's going to write. If it's not already written, it'll be up there. I don't know the time there's, frame on this video. There's, there's, but. there's one written and there's another one coming. <laughs> yes, and uh, we're gonna to have some, beer. we're gonna have this video. We're gonna have a lot of cool little um, information snippets throughout there to help you with all those very scientific measurements and stuff like that yeah. to help you throughout the process. Hopefully this video helped clear up some of those questions on some of the uncertainties that you have on bottling day. Bottling day is actually really, really simple. It's just a process. And as long as you have your process set up and a few friends to help you, you are going to have a fantastic bottling day for about two to three hours until you get into kegging, which is gonna be about 15 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> kegging so, video, another video. Coming, which is already up there too. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think we already have one. <laughs> but anyway, so, bottling is great. Yes. Great thing. Any questions, throw them in the comments below. We always answer. Um, shoot it to us on Twitter at Brew Chatter mm -hmm. and email us, call us. Like, subscribe, do all of the things. Hit the bell if you're into it. That. <laughs> exactly. I'm into I it. I don't know why that makes me crack up every time. E even on the live. But <laughs> <laughs> I know. But thank you all for watching. Like I said, don't be shy with questions. We're always here to help. And uh, have, a, have a great rest of the day. Yeah. Brew on. <laughs> Brew on. Good bottling day, I should say. Yeah, have a good I don't know what time day. it is over there. <laughs>